In today's video, we're going to talk about the Elite Battle Force. I'm going to give you a quick overview over them, my opinions, what I think, how many points each box is going to have and whether they are going to be worth it and how plausible they are. If you enjoy the content, consider leaving a thumbs up and subscribing as well as checking the links down in the description below if you want to support me over on Coffee or Patreon or follow me over on social media. My name is Eplash and this is Empire of War Games. Now, technically speaking, I don't really like covering these leaks. For one, these leaks are way too early and usually I do my prediction videos for the year's Battle Forces or Christmas boxes at the beginning of October. At that point, I still have usually enough time to get my predictions out, then leaks start dripping in at the end of October because people are going to get more concrete information around that time frame. And then, you know, sometime at the end of November, they are announcing the Christmas boxes, which is usually cool, you know? It's a fun time talking about Battle Force. I'm always covering all of them each year, um, making dedicated videos about them, trying to test them out as quickly as I can, doing research, uh, assembling some of them even, uh, just for review purposes. And yeah, now we are sitting here. It's what, the 21st of September? And we have leaks already. And it's weird, man. It's really weird. But we are going to talk about them regardless because not covering them feels like a wasted opportunity and I'm fairly certain that some of you at least want to hear my opinion on them. So how about we cover all of the 40k battle forces and yeah, let's talk about them. Have some fun. So the first battle force is obviously going to be the Space Marine one. If you weren't expecting a Space Marine battle force or if you are new to Warhammer 40k, there's a Space Marine battle force every year. Sometimes we get seven or eight like last year or six maybe um, and sometimes we get just one or two. Sometimes GW really uh, slows down a little bit. It seems that this year we are only getting one, which is surprising. And this one at least has an interesting theme going for it. So what you're getting, rumored, is that you're getting a Space Marine in with Jump Pack. So the new Captain with Jump Pack, completely new model that is supposed to release within the next couple of weeks. And three squads of five uh, Primaris Jump Marines. Uh, they go alongside him. I'm fairly certain that the biggest squad size for these jump marines is usually 10, so it's a little bit weird for them to include 15. I'm not sure why the overkill, but it seems that the entire box is somewhat speed freaks themed, so a little bit white scars, maybe a little bit blood angels, maybe raven guard possibly. Um, so yeah, the idea here is very clear, and if you look at the models that are included alongside that, uh, you are getting an ATV and three Outriders, which if you remember, there are two data cards for these. You have the separate data cards for the Outriders and the ATV and one joint data card for both of them if you want to run them in one squad, which is a cool inclusion, I have to say, and it's a cool idea. Although we had so many bikes discounted, they were in the starter boxes, they were in the recent Battle Force, um, ATVs were recently discounted in the Warhammer Imperium magazine, uh, so it's not like I am having trouble getting them for as little money as possible. But, you know, there are a lot of new players around. New players always joining the hobby and having them discounted is not a bad deal. All in all, if that is the battle force, I'm actually expecting this one not to crack 500 points. Or maybe if it does, barely. Because I'm having a little bit of trouble kind of figuring out how many points a captain in jump pack could be. A regular captain is 80 points. So one with jump pack would be how many? 95? Maybe 100? Um, and those units with jump marines, you know, regular intercessors are now 90 points, maybe even cheaper. I'd actually have to check. Uh, regular intercessors are 85 points. So the jump marines are going to probably cost 100 points. So you are going to have, yeah, okay, you are going to have 400 points, just jump marines, then another 100 points of an ATV and another 100 points of an outrider squad, approximately. So you're going to be sitting at 600 points. It's still not a lot. Uh, I was kind of expecting that these boxes are going to go up a little bit in points because I was expecting them to bring them closer to 1,000 points considering they are not really promoting a 500 points play style anymore uh, because those are exclusively dominated by common patrol boxes, but here we are. Um, all in all, if this is the entire box, I'm going to personally pass on it because while I think that the jump ring and especially the captain with jump pack look really cool, uh, I don't need more Outriders. I'm sitting on 12 of them. I have three ATVs. I'm fine. Um, and the Jump Marines, I don't need 15 of them. I really do not. Uh, I think the perfect number of them would have been a Jump Captain together with a full squad of 10. 
and instead of the five jump marines give me i don't know another squad of stone guard veterans or something new something different you know a full kit of stone guard veterans and not the one from leviathan would be great instead we are getting 15 jump marines and i'm not entirely sure why so my first impression this one's kind of mixed i'm not that convinced by this particular box the next box we are going to talk about are world eaters this one seems significantly more interesting especially to me who is going to consider starting world eaters i only have the combat patrol box and adding me some angron sounds like a great idea and the world eaters battle force seems to do exactly that it is going to follow along in the footsteps of the previous year's uh, death guard box and the thousand suns box and if you remember both of those included their primarchs so magnus the red and Mortarian in their respective boxes. And this time around, it seems, the rumor suggests at least, that we are going to get Angron together with two squads of eight bound, as well as um, one box of Berserkers, so 10 of them, uh, which I think is ideal, because if you look at the Comet Patrol box, uh, there are now eight bound in there, uh, you are having 20 Berserkers in there, and getting more Berserkers than 10 in the Battle Force is actually not necessary. The way that the rumors are suggesting the box looks like, so two squads of three eight bound, uh, 10 berserkers and Angron, makes it a perfect match with the combo patrol box. And if you buy both of them, you have yourself a great army. I'm fairly certain it doesn't get you to 2000 points. I could check. Yep, I checked. And if you combine the rumored battle force together with the combo patrol box, you're getting around 1155 points. So yeah, it's a cool combination. It makes it at least, you know, play 1000 points games and you can expand it from there. I think uh, offering Angron at a discount is a strong move. It would be definitely tempting for a lot of newer players or people who are just looking for a new army to start the army with Angron because, you know, getting the big centerpiece model first and out of the way is usually one of the big hurdles when it's, I'm personally looking at a new army that I want to start. And those big models that you kind of need to get, like the Silent King and so on, are usually models that I don't like purchasing like on their own and having them discounted is definitely a big bonus. So all in all, I think this box is going to be one of the more popular ones, if not the most popular one, because World Eaters are just super popular. I'm fairly certain there's going to be a wave two of World Eaters. And uh, yeah, having Angron discounted is just such a big plus that yeah, I think it's just going to be a great box. And you're getting eight bound, um, hopefully two squads, which would be just perfect. So yeah, my initial impression on this box is very, very positive, and I'm actually considering buying this one myself, if it's real. Next up, we are getting into Xenos territory with the Leagues of Otan. Here, we are getting a Grimnir, Hearthguard, one or two Sagittarius, this is unclear in the rumors, and a Hacker Chunk Land Fortress. So this seems like a very vehicle-based list, and I can exactly tell you why GW decided for, to go for this specific box. Sagittarius have been out of stock in a lot of places for a long time and the restocks have been going mm, let's say slowly so offering them in Christmas boxes in case you know they just couldn't keep up with restocks is an easy way to sell existing Votan players a hacker chunk land fortress and on top of that they are selling you a Grimnir in case you don't have one or if you already have one you know get fucked and um you're also getting Hearthguard and, you know, one or two Sagittarius. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually two. Um, in that case, the box would be very vehicle heavy, but I think it would be fine. Now, since I started recording, the rumors have been updated a little bit and apparently there are 10 uh, Hearthkin Warriors in there as well. So at that point, yeah, you know what, two Sagittarius uh, seems maybe like a little bit too much at that point because the savings would be a little bit too good. So it really depends. You know, one or two Sagittarius, probably one at that point because you have 10 Warriors, 5 Hearthguard, a Grimnir, one Sagittar, one Hacker Chunk. I think there would be a fine box. If they throw in another Sagittar, that box would be incredibly popular and go very well again with the Combat Patrol box. And that is usually what I like to see, you know, because as a new player, if you want to invest a lot, you can do that and without feeling too bad about yourself because you're not buying 20 separate boxes you're buying a combat patrol box and a battle force and you're building that and painting that. It's fine. Um, so yeah, depending on if it's one or two Sagittarius, my opinion may change. But generally speaking, making it a more vehicle heavy battle force seems like a good play and my first impression is rather positive. Is it going to be the most popular box? It depends. I have a quite a difficult time uh, quite gauging how many players the Leagues of Return actually have and how popular the faction is. But the box itself seems super solid to me. And if you are looking forward to starting Leaks of a Ton, and if the rumor is true, uh, it's not a bad box at all. 
Next up, we are going to talk about the Astro Militarum, better known as the Imperial Guard. Now, this box set rumor seems, uh, strikes me just as a little bit weird and kind of awkward. Because usually, battle forces are there to shift models that are on GW's shelves or that just, you know, are not seeing a lot of sales. Let's be real. And the models that they are trying to shift here are Arcadian Shock Troops, you know, which makes sense. They have been included in the uh, army box. They have been included in the combat patrol. I can see that... You know, they are not selling a lot of them separately and a command squad, which is fine. You know, you know, you need Cadian shock troops. If you already have 20 or 30 of them, another 20 is not going to hurt because you're probably maybe you're tempted to run 60 of them. It's absolutely possible and fine. So getting 20 additional of them together with one command squad seems OK. Now, what confuses me is that you're getting two Rogel Dawn tanks in addition to those infantry models. One of them, like one Rogel Dawn, would have made sense. Um, but I'm fairly certain that Rogel Dawns are very popular. The Imperial Guard hasn't seen a lot of new tanks in a while, and the Rogel Dawn is perfectly placed between a Lehman Russ and a Shadow Sword or Bane Blade or whatever you want to call them. And it's just such a nice tank. And giving you two at a discount seems excessive. Because for one, the Imperial Guard has so many models to offer, especially also new ones. Um, that it would have been easy for GW to diversify the box a little bit. And two, this model just doesn't strike me like a model that GW has trouble selling. So I'm going to be a little bit doubtful about this battle force. The ones previously made somewhat sense, you know, they were sensible, especially for the armies considered. But this one strikes me as a little bit weird. You know, 25 infantry models, I think it is in total. And two, uh, Rogel Dawn seems excessive. Um, so yeah, uh, if it's true, it's a great box because Rogel Dawn tanks are expensive and getting two of them at a discount together with some infantry thrown in there, which is probably then going to be for free, quote unquote, um, is fine. Uh, if it's true, it's a great box to buy. You, you get yourself the combat patrol box in addition. At that point, you have enough infantry. You get yourself a few artillery pieces and maybe some specialized infantry and you have enough firepower for your first 1000 points list. Um, yeah, just Imperial Guard is very expensive to collect and getting to Rogel Dawn sounds amazing, but I'm kind of doubtful that this is actually particularly true. So yeah, my impression on this one is positive, but I'm doubtful. Next up, we are going to talk about another Xenos Battle Force, thankfully, because last year was very, I don't know, Space Marine heavy. Uh, we are going to talk about Orcs, and this one is specifically a Beast Snagger Boys themed Battle Force, and this one absolutely makes sense, you know? Beast Snaggers have enough models to warrant their own battle force and getting one in case you're interested in specifically Beast Snagger Boys or if you want to add them to your existing Orcs just makes for an interesting box for all Orc players um, unless you already have a ton of Beast Snagger stuff. So what are you getting? You're getting between 10 and 20 Beast Snagger Boys. This one is unclear yet. I'm hoping for 20, which seems fine. And then you're getting a Kill Rig, you're getting Squig Hawk Riders and you're getting a boss on Squigosaur. All in all, that's approximately 700 points again. I didn't tell you the points for the Astro Militarum, but it's also approximately 700 points. And that seems to be the target for the Battle Forces this year, which is a little bit lower than I was hoping for. Um, but yeah, all in all, this one makes sense. Getting the Kill Rig discounted again, it's a huge ass model, and getting it discounted just makes a ton of sense. And it's very uh, just interesting for people who just want to collect the army and start with the biggest model first. It's just a cool thing to have. You buy the Battle Force, you assemble your Kill Rig, and it's standing there, and it's just amazing. Um, other than that, if you are getting 20 Beast Snagger Boys, they are really good, so I'm a big fan of them. And then we have Squigog Riders and the boss on Squigosaur. Both of them are great models. They look amazing. They, the rules are fine. And yeah, all in all, that seems like a great kind of themed Beast Snagger Boys list. And all in all, as I said, approximately 700 points, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, give or take. And um, all in all, my impression on this one is fairly positive. I wouldn't buy it myself, but I can absolutely see the appeal of this box, especially for Orc players that maybe didn't quite had the chance to get into any of the Beast Snagger stuff because it's relatively new, and they wanted to get into it uh, with a big box. And that seems very inviting in, in contrast to the army box, which was a little bit weird in my opinion. Um, and yeah, if you are a Beast Snagger fan and you already have a lot of this stuff, if you are not already drowning in Beast Snagger boys, maybe this is interesting. Having a second kill rig is definitely not a bad prospect. And more Squigog Riders or another boss on Squigosaur, it's not bad either. So it depends. I am personally kind of, you know, in favor of this box. I like it. 
Um, it's not something to write home about, in my opinion, but it's definitely a fun and themed box, and for that, I can appreciate it. For the Tyranids, and this is the last box, and probably the most interesting for me, because I started collecting Tyranids again with Leviathan. So what you're getting is a non-emissary, which is super surprising, very new model and incredibly impressive model. It's not one of the most expensive models. It's not in the same tier as Angron, for example, but it is. it still commands a hefty price and getting it discounted is a big plus. We're also getting a Hive Tyrant in that box, rumored, but it's cool. You know, Hive Tyrants went up in points for absolutely no reason in the latest data slate and they suck, um, especially the Swarm Lord. But you know, it's a cool model and having it in a Tyranid army makes sense, especially for people who started collecting Tyranids again with Leviathan. So both of those models make a lot of sense. What you are getting on top of that in infantry are Homogans. Thank God it's not Termogans. And I hope this rumor is true in that regard because I have enough Termogans. I have really enough. I have the Worm of 40k board game, you know, with um, the, the Space Marine character from the video game and 20 Termogans. I have Leviathan twice. I'm good on Termogans, really. And getting instead 20 Hormagans sounds amazing. And on top of that, getting another, what, 10 Gene Stealers is perfect. So all of these models apparently are new, except for the Hive Tyrant. And all in all, that box makes a lot of sense. Getting Hormagans in there uh, discounted is a big bonus for me, because I think Hormagans uh, separately are horribly overpriced, and I probably wouldn't have bought them separately. So if they are in this box, they are probably the only ones I'm going to get. Especially if they are 20, that would be perfect because I could run one full squad. Um, having some big heavy hitters that I don't already own, like the non-emissary, like a Hive Tyrant or Swarm Lord, is just cool to have. Especially for people who just have the Leviathan box, it's a great addition. And last but not least, getting the Gene Stealers in there, you're probably just going to get 10 of them. So it's not quite enough to make an interesting kind of unit of them, but definitely enough to just, you know, throw them on the table, paint them, um, assemble them and use them a little bit. And maybe if you like the Gene Stealers aesthetically, you can then upgrade to all the models that fit the, you know, Vanguard theme a little bit better with the three different characters they have or three different separate models, more gene stealers, they have different head options and so on. So this box in particular has me very excited and interested. If this rumored box is correct, I'm probably going to get this one as well, simply because it is a perfect addition to what we got in Leviathan. The combo patrol box, as you've seen maybe in my recent video, is not worth it at all because it's just the same stuff we've already gotten three times around. And getting something different for Turinids makes sense. Also, why I believe this rumor is true is simply because GW did the same thing for the Necrons uh, last time and for the Death Guard in 8th edition. So they released a new faction, the Death Guard or the Necrons, and in the same year, those factions got battle forces that were complementary with those starter boxes. And I think that's a great way to go about introducing new factions or uh, factions with a big new, new roundup of models. And yeah, this just seems like a great battle force. And I ho really hope wholeheartedly that this rumored box is true. So yeah, those are my first impressions on these boxes. If you have any opinions on them, let me know in the comments below. But generally speaking, I'm very excited. I'm going to make a separate predictions video on my own with my own notes. I already had notes from a couple of months ago. Probably just going to use those to be as unbiased as possible. But you know, we have rumors, we have new information flying around. So my predictions are probably going to get a little bit more biased as time goes on. But the point is, the rumors from the last couple of years have been super reliable. Um, we've been talking about, you know, battle forces for the Raven Guard and Imperial Fists and later on for all of the Space Marines and exactly that happened. So, yeah, I'm going to actually take these rumors seriously because they are not super outlandish. The boxes seem somewhat reasonable and I'm hoping for a lot of these boxes that they are actually true. Now, when it comes to the pricing, you know, I really hope it's not the same price tier as something like Leviathan. Because that would be outrageous. People are usually, especially on Reddit, extremely negative when it comes to the pricing. They are throwing numbers out like $250, $300 for a battle force. That's stupid. If GW actually does that, they are really not that smart. I hope we are going to be sitting at our usual, what, $210 it was. I don't know how much it was in euros or pounds. £125? Pounds, £135 pounds maybe uh, for the latest battle forces. We are fine. We had enough price increases. Give us this one, GW. You're trying to shift models that are apparently not selling that well. Discount them at least 30%, ideally 40%. Um, if you are really increasing prices to, what, $225 maybe, that would really suck. 
So I'm really, really hoping for $210 Battle Forces, but that remains to be seen. If you have any opinions on the pricing on any of these boxes, are you excited about them? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, take these rumors with a grain of salt. It bears repeating. Um, I know you know that. I know most of my viewers are capable of critical thinking and so on. But, you know, it's just worth repeating that these are not official information. It could be complete misinformation I'm sharing here, but it's fun to talk about these rumors, you know, and that's why I'm making this video. So, yeah, drop all your thoughts in the comments, leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for listening. Take care.